Listen up, this is a Range Rover Sport SVR, the fastest Range Rover ever made. With almost 600 horsepower coming from a supercharged V8, a luxurious interior, and carbon fiber styling all over its exterior. So using this car provided by the amazing folks from Porsche of downtown LA, I'm gonna try and explain what this bad boy is all about in this review of the Range Rover Sport SVR. Range Rover, two words that signify the SUV benchmark for luxury, prestige, and something on every rich housewife's short list of cars they're willing to drive. And this one is the baddest one, distinguishable by three letters, SVR, and a special carbon edition one at that with all of these carbon fiber pieces which subjectively add at least 10 horsepower per trim piece but objectively do nothing on a car that weighs over 5,000 pounds. Checking down the sarcasm, the SVR is mostly subtle but with some aggression. The only thing that kinda gives it away are the quad tailpipes, but I do think the Range Rover Sport is the best looking car in its segment. Now let's talk about some of the mechanical bits that make this the SVR starting off with the engine. So this is a five liter supercharged V8 making 575 horsepower and 516 pounds feet of torque. It's made it to an eight speed ZF automatic transmission and it's putting power down to all four wheels. Now this equates to a zero to 60 time of in the range of 4.3 to 4.5 seconds. And with six different driving modes on tap, Land Rover is not forgetting about their off-roading capabilities with modes like snow, sand, mud, and rock climbing. Now, one thing not many people are gonna use their SVR for is to tow things around, but this thing is very, very capable in that department. Over 7,700 pounds of towing capacity, and of course, this is all due to the four-wheel drive and also the trick air suspension with adaptive dampers that the SVR comes with. Of course, this gives it that signature lowered ride height that most Range Rovers or Land Rovers are accustomed to being seen with. Now, the SVR also gets upgraded brakes to be able to stop that 575 horsepower coming out of this engine and it's riding on unique 22 inch wheels but let's put all that aside and take a listen to one of the nicest sounding SUVs on the market today So now the interior of the SVR and because this is the top of the line trim, it's a lot nicer. The quality of the interior is very high with a great mix of leather, metal and carbon fiber. I mean, just check out the leather and the stitching on the steering wheel. It's very, very nice. So let me tell you a little bit about these seats because they're exclusive to the SVR trim level. They're a sport bucket style, they look very cool, and there's function behind the form as well because according to Land Rover, they save 66 pounds compared to a seat found in a lower trim level. They're 20-way adjustable, so I can see pretty much any body size being able to fit in here just fine. They have thigh extensions, they have side bolsters, so it holds you in really nice for being a sport seat. They're heated, they're cooled you can also get them with massaging functionality and overall it's just a pretty comfortable seat to sit in i'll give you a better dynamic of that during the driving portion of the review switching over into the technology this is a three screen setup you have one in front of you as your gauge cluster there's a lot of information there you can customize it the way you want two dials one dial map as a primary display media as a primary display so there's a lot of customization there which is always great Coming over into the infotainment system, this is the Land Rover in control system, and it's a dual screen setup. I'm a big fan of dual screen setups, similar to what you get in an Audi car. And the infotainment system itself is okay. As far as from a graphic standpoint, I wish it was a little crisper and a little bit more modern looking. 
but the overall simplicity is where this system is excelling in. I found that after about a minute or so of use, I figured out, hmm, this kind of makes sense. Now, some of the weaker points, the reaction time of the system is at times not the best, especially when you're scrolling through longer menus or where you're doing pinch to zoom with the map. It is somewhat laggy and there's some latency there. Otherwise, you do have the ability to run Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and having the benefit of the dual screen setup is actually very good as well as far as its interaction or your interaction with those screens because the split screen allows you to display more things at once, therefore reducing your need to fiddle with menus and that's, the, that's one of the things I dislike the most when you have to go in through deep menus and things like that to operate the infotainment system. So for example, the low lower screen controls your climate controls, your seats, and some of the car features like the modes. And then the upper is all infotainment, media, navigation. So you don't have to switch screens if you wanted to control any of those aspects. Now two other amenities, first being charging. There's two USB type A's in the center area here. And speaking of the center area, there's something really cool. It's a little refrigerator that has different levels of chilling or cooling capabilities and I stuck my hand in there for a second and it's actually quite cold so I could imagine this thing could chill your drink rather nicely. So that's it for the front now let's move to the rear and I'll tell you what's going on back there. So let me give you an idea of what's going on back here very quickly. I'm sitting behind myself at 5'11". You can see I have plenty of legroom here. Headroom is also not an issue. I've got an inch or two of space, so somebody taller than I am will be able to sit back here. The overall width, three individuals my size will be able to fit in here as well. The shoulder room is always the limiting factor, so it just depends, I suppose. But three children are going to fit in here just fine. Some of the other amenities, this has a four-zone climate control system, so you do have the ability to individually adjust the temperature for each zone of the car. There is also heated seating capabilities even in the back seats here. Panoramic roof which is always wonderful and charging two USB type C outlets and a little armrest here which is nicely cushioned with two cup holders. So overall decent sized back seat. Quickly touching on the trunk, you've got 27 and a half cubic feet of space and 62.2 with the second row seats folded down, which are both much less than what you would get in the competition. But hey, none of that really matters because you're driving a Range Rover. Now let's go to what does matter, the way this thing feels behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the review. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and go for a quick drive. Starts up here up on the dash. And the exhaust note sounds pretty good at startup. And let's see what this Range Rover Sport SVR's got. So immediately setting off, one of the first things you'll notice when you're driving this car is the command style seating position. Now, I've had folks tell me who own Range Rovers, who have experience with Range Rovers, that this is one of the selling points when you're buying a Range Rover. And I can certainly understand why now after experiencing it for the first time. And, and uh, quite frankly, this is the first Range Rover or Land Rover product that I've reviewed and had extensive time with so i can certainly see why folks say that and it provides a very unique experience outward wise outward visibility wise at least okay so now i'm gonna go ahead and turn on some go fast modes put it in dynamic mode enable the exhaust why is it in eco mode engines off andy what are you doing okay a dynamic mode put it in its lowest ride height sporty feel and let's see what this thing has as far as its performance and some of its straight line speed. Now, granted, it is a very ugly day outside today in Southern California. It was raining all day earlier and uh, I got a little lucky because it stopped raining about uh, an hour ago, but the roads are still very wet and muggy. So I'm gonna try and be uh, a little bit more careful and not nudge this thing too hard, but let's see if we can get a feel for it. So up onto a straight here, and let's go. Wow. Yes, the exhaust note is unbelievable. It's actually really, really engaging. 
engaging. Let's see. Wow, it really sucks you back into your seat. Very, very powerful. And uh, the exhaust note really makes this thing feel much faster than it actually is. Not to say that it's slow, but the exhaust note and the engine note are actually really nice. So come to a full stop here and let's go again. Front jumps up. Animal taking off and you get a slight hint of a supercharger whine which adds on to the funness of this car and that engagement of course this is the SVR so uh, this is actually a properly quick car and uh, the power is very very usable not only is it fast but from a daily driving standpoint, the download torque is wonderful, makes it extremely, extremely easy to drive this thing on a daily basis. Now let's turn over here and get one more straight pull. Let me pass some of these cars here. And I'm gonna do it from a roll for in second. nice and the fun thing about the SUV and a fast SUV is obviously when you mash it the hood just jumps up and it's this cool experience now let's go ahead and switch back and put it back in the normal mode and let me tell you about the rest of this thing as far as its steering suspension and some of the things that apply more for daily driving so you've got basically two modes that you're gonna mess around with on a daily basis. You've got normal and you've got dynamic, which is Range Rover speak for sport. And then in addition to that, you have the ride height. So you've got the lowest, the middle, and then the off-roading. So essentially you've got two and two. Now let's start from one extreme end of the spectrum. So dynamic mode with the lowest ride height, you don't wanna be in this mode, especially if you're driving in the city, keep that for when you're driving fast because as I was driving around here, downtown, downtown LA roads are infamous for being terrible and it's not really fun. Sport with the normal ride height, a little bit better, but again, you really don't wanna be in this mode. Next, uh, normal with the low ride height. Now this is interesting because I know a lot of people drive around their Range Rovers with a lower ride height because naturally it just looks cooler that way. And this is adequate. You get decent ride comfort in this mode. But when you're in normal and normal ride height, and I think this is quite obvious, you get the best ride and it's very comfortable. But the one thing I do want to caveat this with is that have your expectation checked when you're driving the SVR because if you're coming in here and you are expecting a really soft and supple ride because hey this is the most expensive Range Rover or Range Rover Sport and it's got to do everything nicely well I think you may be a little disappointed there because granted again I haven't driven a Range Rover Sport a non SVR or a regular Range Rover so I don't have anything to compare it to but I have driven several other fast SUVs and I can certainly tell that there's some relation here. There's some underlying stiffness and sportiness. Of course, this is the SVR built into this chassis. So please keep that in mind if you are considering the SVR. So otherwise, this is a very fun and engaging SUV to drive on a daily basis. So that's the Range Rover Sport SVR. It's rather quick for being such a big and heavy SUV and the exhaust note just adds on to the driving experience. The interior is nice with a good blend of expensive materials with the only weakness possibly being the infotainment system. Otherwise, from a daily driving standpoint, it's quite comfortable. Now I'm gonna leave you with this and it's a question I ask myself every time I talk about a car like this. And that is, what's the purpose of having an almost 600 horsepower SUV that weighs over 5,000 pounds? Now I don't really have an answer, but I do have two thoughts. Whether we like it or not, the SUV is here to stay. And it's a matter of competition at this point because Porsche makes an almost 700 horsepower Cayenne. BMW, Audi, and Mercedes all make 600 plus horsepower SUVs. And second and finally, as a car enthusiast, considering the rapid acceleration of EV cars, 
I'm just glad a car like this still exists versus not. So that's all I've got. If you've got any questions, please make sure you leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.